Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today I want to talk about something called predictive coding. And in English, what that means is what you expect, you get. I often say that, you know, if you expect to hurt, you're gonna. If, uh, if you go looking for the pain, your brain actually goes, oh yeah, I remember that, and it connects it. So predictive coding is a term I learned from Dr. Schubner. Um, he did a talk in front of uh, an audience at Google and uh, he spoke about this predictive coding and what that basically means is when you expect something like pain, the brain can literally create it at will just simply through that expectation. So, when I say try not to put any attention on your pain, shift your focus away from it, stop looking for it. If you have an hour where you're feeling good, don't ask the question, where's my pain? Because inevitably the brain will go, oh yeah, I remember, there it is. Or it will literally create it at will based on you looking for it and expecting it. And so people often talk a lot about the conditioned response. And how do I break that conditioned response? Well, you got to stop expecting to hurt. And that's half the battle with this whole TMS stuff and this mind-body stuff is how do you literally get to the point where your brain is not looking for the pain or managing it or monitoring it or fearing it all day long. So we need to use our conscious brain to override the automatic pilot that's going, oh my God, this is going to hurt, this is going to hurt, this is going to hurt, right? And so, you know, I used to, I used to have some conditioned responses when I was really, towards the end of my battle, when I was really in a lot of chronic pain, seven or eight out of ten constantly, um, driving over bumps on the road, oh, oh, feeling that spasm, everything getting off the couch, getting in and out of the car, getting in and out of bed, even sitting on the toilet and, you know, having to take care of that business. There were plenty of times when I would go, oh boy, this is gonna really be bad. And inevitably it was. So what I had to do was just start reassuring myself that I was fine. And it takes repetition, it takes practice, it takes repetition, it takes practice. It takes repetition. It takes practice. No, the, the video is not skipping. I am saying that on purpose because it takes brutal repetition to sometimes get it through to this, you know, this brain of ours that you are in fact okay. So my technique, I taught it a long time ago. I would literally, right before I would do something that I expected to hurt usually, I would say, I'm good, and I would move. I would make the move. I would get up. So instead of hesitating and scooching to the end of the couch and gingerly oh, raising myself up, knowing it was going to hurt, I basically use this I'm good technique. And it's literally when you believe something's going to hurt right before you make that move. You don't sit there. You don't debate it. You don't worry about it. Oh, dear Lord, I have to get up off the couch. This is going to be bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here it comes. Ow. I knew it was going to hurt. Right? did that for 13 years guys so not making fun of anybody this is reality this is what we do this is a fear-based response so if you want to break this predictive coding which is essentially when you expect something to happen the brain will literally create it if you want to fix that literally got to change your expectations you have to literally with your conscious mind convince yourself that you're gonna be okay and that you can handle it. And even if it hurts a little bit, it's, so what, right? That's that whole care less um, theme that I've been kind of rattling on about. So when you expect things to go bad, they do. The brain creates it. When you go looking for the pain, the brain goes, oh yeah, I remember that. Here it is. There you go. And so this isn't just stuff I'm talking about. This is literally how the brain works. And... Uh, so what can you do to break a conditioned response? Convince yourself, talk to yourself. I'm good, I'm all right. Yeah, I can handle it, even if it hurts a little bit. But 
I'm not broken. I can do this. I'm fine. I'm all right. You know, whatever it takes. And if you literally need to take a move, to move your body in such a way that previously had hurt, literally try it. I'm good, move. And don't hesitate. Don't give your brain any chance because inevitably what you are doing when you say, I'm good, as you're making the move, you're literally sending a strong signal to the brain to go, huh, okay, he's got this. This is, this is fine. So whatever language you decide to use, Make sure it is soothing and calming and, you know, confidence building. Like, I can do this. Yeah, I'm good. I got this. Right? And so, I'm good. Move. I'm good. Move. Do it over and over and over again. Especially when you have this conditioned response that says, sitting is going to be awful. A lot of people are like that. Oh, I can't sit. Haven't sat for a year. Okay, well, guess what? That's a conditioned response. It's predictive coding. And literally, there's nothing structural causing it, but the fear and the expectation that sitting down in a chair is going to really, really hurt and really hurt bad. And the longer you sit there, the worse it's going to get. You're going to literally create that. You're, you're instructing your brain. You know, watch brain instructions from, I don't know, a week ago, a few days back. We are literally instructing our brain what to do. So by expecting to hurt, the brain literally creates it even though there's no structural reason for it. So the brain is always listening. That's why I keep on talking to you about awareness. What is it that I'm thinking? If you are thinking fearful and anxious thoughts about moving or hurting, or oh, I've had a decent morning, but oh boy, pain usually comes back in the afternoon. You're instructing the brain, go look it, look for it. And the brain goes, I got it, here it is. You were looking for this. Here you go, it's not lost anymore. And so, I know these topics are somewhat repetitive, but I did want to point out, like, this isn't just stuff Dan is saying. I, I got this from Dr. Schubner, and he's done more on the scientific end than anybody I know, um, you know, as far as this, you know, this brain science stuff goes, this neural pathways stuff. And, um, you know, it's so important to become aware of where your thoughts are going. And if you are constantly chasing yourself around with a hatchet, you're in danger, you're in danger, you're in danger, you know, and micromanaging your body and being hyper vigilant to not, ju not just every physical sensation in your body, but also every social situation. You know, you're, you're basically putting your, your brain on high alert and saying, watch out, things are dangerous. They always have been and they always will be. And then you wonder why your nervous system is on high alert and freaking out all the time and not responding in a calm way. So, predictive coding. It's a fancy word for basically you get what you expect. You want to change your results, change your expectation. If you expect to hurt every day, you're going to. If you think you are stuck and you are never going to get out of pain, you're going to be right because that's what you're instructing the brain. And I know it sounds like I'm being a little bit blunt here, but if you want to change your results and your outcome, you got to change the expectation going in. Wake up and instead of going, oh no, how bad is today going to be? I bet today's going to be awful. Wake up and go, so grateful to be alive and... You know, why is it so easy to know it's going to be a great day? And why, You know, I know I'm going to feel great today. And then you literally confidently get up and you move. You don't go, oh, I'm afraid to move. Oh, no. You literally got to convince yourself. This is a sales job to your subconscious mind that you're literally safe. You're literally okay. As it relates to the emotions, if you are resistant, oh, I hate journaling. I hate feeling my emotions. I'm so afraid of them. And every time I feel my emotions, the pain jumps. Well, the reason that's happening is because you had this previous belief and this conviction that emotions were scary, dangerous, and unacceptable. And therefore, the brain is protecting you at all costs from experiencing them. So as it relates to emotions, again, if you expect that emotions are dangerous and they're going to hurt you because the last time you did this journaling and you got in touch with some really tough emotions, the pain amped up. 
it's doing that because the danger alarms are being sounded. Ding, 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 danger, danger. Look, Dan's feeling anger, he's feeling rage. Oh no, he's gonna be just like his dad. Danger, danger, danger. And the brain goes, all right, got it. Amp up the pain, let's distract him. So expect that you don't have to hurt. Expect better things. And you're literally gonna wanna talk to yourself, talk to your brain and say, it's okay brain, I'm doing this. I'm gonna feel some emotions now. I'm gonna allow myself to feel it and I'm gonna be okay, right? The whole job of this is almost like you're soothing a little kid. It's okay, if you wanna cry, it's okay, I'm here for you. You're gonna be okay. I'm gonna be there for you. You wanna be sad? It's okay, don't worry, you're not gonna fall into a pit of depression. You're just sad today. Oh, you wanna be angry? It's okay, be angry. You're allowed, right? You wanna soothe yourself, you wanna console yourself that you're allowed to feel these emotions and you're still okay. Like, okay brain, I'm doing this, I'm gonna allow myself to feel these emotions and I can handle it, right? It's really just a matter of reversing the psychology. If the psychology is that you can't handle your emotions, flip it. Yes, I can. And as often as possible, you know, kind of reaffirm for yourself that new belief that you want to kind of adopt, if you will. And then as you do these emotional exercises and then you soothe yourself afterwards and then you go about and have a decent day trying to have some fun, you're essentially proving and confirming to the brain that you can handle the emotions. And over time, the need for that danger alarm called pain or other symptoms lessens and lessens and eventually the brain goes, Phew, he can deal with it, he can handle it. So look, that's not all about predictive coding, um, but what you expect you tend to get. Shift and change your expectations and you're gonna do better. Um, covering a number of different topics here, but all this stuff is really important guys and gals and just take a deep breath. You're gonna be okay. One other thing Dr. Schubner taught is that our ability to tolerate pain depends on our perception of how long the pain is gonna last. So, dentists. I love my dentist, he's actually a really nice guy. And it's not very comfortable going in there. Even a teeth, teeth cleaning can be very uncomfortable with them poking and spraying and ah, not fun. But in some cases, we gotta get some work done. But we go in there saying, oh, this is gonna be awful. And we feel the pain and we suck it up because we know it's gonna be gone in a few days. And we can tolerate some very severe pain when we know it's short term. The problem is the catastrophization, the fear that, oh my God, I'm never gonna beat this TMS. I'm gonna have this chronic pain for the rest of my life. And what happens to our ability to tolerate that pain? The same pain that might be equivalent at the dentist where you go, ah, oh, it sucks, but all right, I'll be fine soon. Versus the same pain that you go, this is forever pain. How, how do you see the difference in, in your ability to tolerate it? So one thing that you can do that'll be very helpful is to know and convince yourself and remind yourself that look, yes, the pain is bad today, but it's temporary. It's not forever. And when people go, how am I supposed to not care about my pain? Well, because if you truly believe that you've got TMS or distraction pain, and if you truly believe that these processes have helped countless hundreds of thousands of other people, maybe probably millions of people by now, um, and you truly believe that you're following proven processes that work and the examples of others that have gone before you and gotten better, then you can truly believe without taking a leap of faith, but with accurate knowledge, you can truly believe that, okay, I'm in the middle of shit right now, but it's temporary. And guess what that's gonna do? It's gonna allow you to tolerate the pain a little bit better. It's gonna allow you to turn down the fear because you know, you deeply know it's temporary. So, change your expectations. Get rid of this predictive coding thing where you expect to hurt 
and therefore the brain creates it. Stop looking for your pain because you know the brain will find it and say, here it is, you lost this, right? Change your expectations. Talk to yourself, talk to your brain. Dr. Sarno talked about that and he said, talk to your brain, talk to your brain. Well, what do you say? You tell yourself, I'm good, I'm good, I'm all right. I gotta get up now and I'm good, go! And you go. These things are important, you know? You gotta be your own best cheerleader. Um, you got to be the, the person who instills confidence in yourself. Um, I love doing that for you. I love being the guy who kind of gives you that pep talk and gets you set for the day. Um, but I can't be there with you all day long. So learn that you are okay. Learn that you're going to be okay. Learn that your, your body is already fine. Learn that by expecting better days, you'll get better days by just simply through repetition, through repetition, through repetition, through repetition, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Or whatever you'd like to say, I can do this, I can do this, this, I'm not gonna hurt. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You're gonna hurt less. And inevitably, what I experienced every time I did that, if I forgot to do it and I said, oh, this is gonna be bad, oh, here we go, it would hurt bad. But if I would say, I'm good, it would hurt less. Didn't hurt. It didn't disappear 100%, but I would hurt less. And through repetition and repetition and repetition and repetition and repetition, my brain eventually got the message that, hey, look at that. He's hurt less and less and less and less. The past 50 times he's gotten up off the couch, I guess we don't have to worry about that so much anymore. Same thing with sitting down. If you've got to go sit down, Boy, if you're driving all the way to the uh, restaurant thinking, oh dear Lord, I'm gonna have to sit through an hour meal in some chair that I don't know if it's comfortable or not, what are you doing? You're setting the expectation that you're gonna hurt like crazy. And then why are you surprised when you get to the restaurant and it hurts? Or to your mom's house or to somebody's house or sit in the car to drive somewhere. Um, Somebody from one of these groups just literally said they got on, for the first time in like 20 years, they got on a plane and took an 11 hour plane ride. And she was so thrilled. And if you're listening, I'm so proud, so proud of you. That is so freaking awesome. You're getting your life back. And to everybody else who's listening, you can get your life back too. You just gotta change the expectations. You gotta do the work, feel the emotions, soothe yourself, turn down the volume on your nervous system and your stress, and know that you're okay. Change your language, get the mindset right, shift your focus away from the pain. Stop expecting to hurt. All right, guys, I hope this is sinking in a little bit. I feel like I'm repeating myself. I guess that happens if, uh, with uh, nine months of daily videos, but these concepts are really important and they're what really flipped the switch for me is to finally understand all this stuff. The less I cared about the pain, the less I hurt. The more I convinced myself that I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, the less I hurt. And then eventually it let go. So hopefully you found this useful. Predictive coding. Stop expecting the pain because the brain will literally create it out of thin air by you expecting it. So with that, guys, love you. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, yeah, you can do this. See ya.